Hey there! You must be wondering why I'm having this newspaper in my hand. It's like evening right now, it's not even morning. But I was just going through the editorial look on the newspaper. And you know, when you just open the newspaper, it just comes in the middle. The editorial and the op-ed page. But often what we do is we often just take the newspaper in our hand and the, and the first thing we often do is maybe just go to the sports page, like towards the last few pages so on sports. Or is maybe a few international news. But most importantly, when we get the newspaper in our hand, in our doorstep maybe, the first thing we read is just the, the headlines. But I just felt that what, what interests me a lot was the editor. We often skip through the editor because it's kind of like, oh, like very long and it's uh, it consists of even op-ed, so it's basically someone's opinion, a very pro prolific writer or a prolific author, or someone who's made, who observes certain situations that happen, so it's often their perspective, not like reports and things like that, or even usually what the editor of the, of the newspaper wants to say, uh, or someone who wants to like, really convey of, of that, so it's often restricted in this space. I still remember in the, in before, there used to be a cartoon as well, uh, like what we have in Times of India, the, the common man, and there was this one, one cartoon of sorts rep representing today's times, be it politically or socially. So I was just having this news, the, the newspaper and uh, I'm recently going through a few editorials of the daily newspaper and uh, this is the Hindu, the, the, the Hindu newspaper. I subscribe to it because I feel that like that kind of reporting is pretty articulate. It's a lot, lot more better than other newspapers such personally, the, 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 the language and also the kind of the news is what also was presented as well, but also there is this controversy, right? Allegedly, there was this uh, Chinese, the Communist Party of China ad in the Hindu newspaper as such. So I was just wondering, dear Hindu, why why Communist Party of China? A bit of effort, maybe just Communist Party of India, the CPIM, has had their ad on the newspaper as such. But oh, the CPM doesn't have money. Moving on. So we are just going through the few news, few uh, editorials, and often you notice that you often have ads. Now, nowadays, ads are there in the front page, and over here you have ads, and you have classification, you have uh, you know job recruitment across the page. But usually in the editorial, like in this page, you don't you don't usually have ads as such, ads or or, or things like. That. It often consists of very key things. For example, in this editorial, what you see, it's as of date 10th February. Uh, we are having this, there is one article by uh, there is one piece by Shachit Sh Sh Tharoor who is the MP from Trivandrum and uh, Vinod Thomas who is the visiting professor at the National University of Singapore. It's, it's mentioned over here as to who who written it. He has mentioned about reviving the Kerala model of develop of development. But I should be analyzing uh, the other day's research process from the previous uh, week, which of which really interested me as such. So in this particular paper, you have. You know, a basic byline and also uh, each person's uh, pieces but also this very what I've really noticed is in the Hindu as, as as of now is that this particular segment called as the data point which basically talks about maybe the, the parliament or be it sports like over here it mentioned about can the world champions make the cut then there is these articles and also what also you mentioned in the editorial is often the letters to the editor what do you feel for example I mentioned Letters email to the email to them, and basically it's often uh, about what, what's happening that particular day. So that there, there is the the aspect of the need debate. There is the counterpoint, and there's also uh, Lata Mangeshwar Didi who had uh, unfortunately passed away as well. Uh, her uh, about her as well. There's just basically the general public who's writing to the editor as such. And then this also what interested me was also this small segment called as the archives. And since Hindu is uh, pretty much an old newspaper, like it's been here for more than a century, uh, you have a few of their old pieces. So over here it's uh, from 1972 and 1922. So I should take you across a few of the newspapers as such. So I have the February 4th, which is a Friday, and I've just opened the editorial. And now what I've just put down is like this key points from some of the some of the important articles or some of the important pieces as mentioned in this 
uh, page as such. So I'll just take you across to the first one. What really interested me is this Winter Olympics. So the headline is mentioned as the winter is here. And it's actually a controversy because, you know, as many countries have actually pulled off from the uh, diplomatic, they have they're actually pulled out from the uh, opening when you're then uh, on the form of diplomatic boycott as such. And even India also has joined the foray. Um, and from, from India, it's actually uh, a skier by the name of Arif Khan who is actually participating in the games. Uh, but then the reason why, um, you know, India has actually boycotted, though other countries have boycotted for the reason as such, India has actually boycotted because the, the, there was one PLA commander, who is actually the, of the, the People Liberation Army of China. He was actually the one who was involved in the Galwan clashes. Uh, of 2020 and he is the one who is one of the participants of the, of the traditional torch rally, uh, relay so that's the reason why uh, it's a pretty controversial because uh, it's China, China life loves to make things a lot more political even in games as such and uh, you saw how the COVID situation was one thing which really damaged them negatively so this is one this is one, one really important news with regard to diplomatic uh, boycott of the games also, one very interesting uh, article. This is actually written by uh, Sushant Singh, by the name of Sushant Singh. He, and this is very mentioned about, you know, it starts off with the 1962 war and the way the, the Chinese have actually mistreated the our, our soldiers as well. And this is one thing wherein even with regard to the, the they were refused to cremate the Indian soldiers because they were there in, in their place because they had uh, occupied territory so they were refusing to cremate the body so this is with regard to the border issue and that is with regard to the 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 uh, cremation of those uh, soldiers as such because the chinese had were asserting their territory and like as i've mentioned in my notes is also wherein the bodies they were in the chinese claimed their territory and they were basically ill-treating the bodies of the indian soldiers and uh, again this is also brings into reminder that even today uh, what, uh, also, what happened in 2020 with regard to the Galwan clashes? There's all uh, this continuously st um, friction between uh, what the Chinese uh, often more li li like to expand over their territory as such, and uh, especially what we saw also wherein they blocked Indian patrolling, as mentioned over here in the 2013 Depsang intrusion. Then one more thing which really interested me was that this particular uh, um, piece with regard to the curious case of Meghalaya's COVID-19 relief package. And again, I, I went through the newspaper and I'm, I'm assuming that, that there's nowhere mentioned about the Northeast in particular or even to Meghalaya in particular as such. And this is one thing wherein I noticed that uh, the author uh, is also one of the authors. Her, her name is Angela Rajid, who you can see here. She is actually um, uh, an, an activist and she has mentioned about how that uh, in, in, in covid that is, uh, it is, it, it, it's actually affected a lot and it necessarily needs to be an auditing, especially in, in Megalia as such. And how the government relief has, it, it, and how the government relief is kind of reaching, but then there's no published schemes or guidelines or, or eligibilities. And then also the RTI has been put forward with regard to those in the unorganized sector where they've received any payment and particular database as such. That actually interested me because that's, that's when the aspect of RTI comes in, which right, right to information, wherein one seeks for transparency from this very system. Then there's, of course, the letter to the, le the editor. Um, again, and again, as I mentioned to you, is what people feel. So it's that particular time and date, like this regard to the, uh, with regard to the marital rape and the age limit, age, age of marriage being uh, increased 21. And then one thing was also with regard to the budget and the budget was something which was delivered in, uh, during the period. And that is with regard to how has the budget really delivered on reforms and whether it's on the, on the slogan of how the government has been saying that, you know, they would like to go ahead with minimum government and maximum governance. So, but how, uh, it's between two people. It's actually a dialogue of sorts. It's called Parley. And Parley is like a dialogue of sorts or a conference. It's actually between uh, Shruti Rajagopal and Sandeep Aluwalia uh, of their respective fields when, they, when they're kind of discussing and putting forward their points with regard to further, further questions which, which they put forward as to how the budget has address these issues whether India's whether it looks at a, at a more protectionist kind of a economy of sorts or, with, or, or also with regard to public goods and also most importantly how the, the, the recent bit about you know, taxation of the bitcoins as such uh, and, and digital currency and whether this budget is actually looking forward into the Atmanirbar Bharat or self-reliance as such 
And then there's also an interesting article on the media, the freedom of speech in Hong Kong, where there has been a lot of violations by the Chinese administration. Then this is also one interesting point with regard to uh, the Bangladesh uh, recognition. And this is with regard to 4th of Feb 1972, wherein Bangladesh was, uh, as per the report of the, by the, of the Hindu and Feb 3rd, the next few days saw intense dip diplomatic activity and various capitals for stabilizing Bangladesh's hard-won freedom. And how you know that then the 1971 war where it happened and later many countries started to recognize it like Britain and other European countries as well. And then there is the aspect of the, of the forced conversion which happened uh, during the, 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 the Khilafat movement which unfortunately also dwell into a lot more controversial details what, what, what looking at how people look at history as well but also unfortunately the, the, the forced conversion and a lot of disastrous actions would happen following the Khilafat movement. In, in the Hindu edition it's mentioned as per 1922 of February 4th. And we also have the very unfortunate kind of situation and as per the data point what is mentioned on Monday of February 7th wherein they have mentioned with regard to how the pole bound state that is all these five states Manipur, Uttarakhand, Punjab and uh, and UP and Goa how the, uh, these states as they go for elections how is this the justice system uh, delivering with regard to you know the, the, the number of police personnel, the kind of spending on police station, how the, the cases, the amount of uh, per capita spend on judiciary, then the wo woman in police, if you could see as mentioned over here, and how it's kind of a very dismal affair as to how several of the states, especially with regard to UP, uh, the the kind of, uh, the aspect of data, so what, what, what I mentioned here, this, the target trust India, and how in certain indicators UP has excelled, but in many indicators with regard to you know justice uh, delivery, uh, states like Manipur and Goa have excelled as such. And when I look at 9th of Feb, it is Wednesday. Uh, this was something which really interested me. Uh, this is again wherein the chief minister. I was just wondering like what is the chief minister writing in the editorial, and then I realized that this about. This is about the NEET, as as you know that NEET that is actually a very controversial aspect in Tamil Nadu, wherein uh, the government is looking forward to like to like to make it an, an exemption for Tamil Nadu, and that's why there was the NEET exemption bill which, which was brought forward in the assembly of Tamil Nadu, and how uh, they are looking forward as to as to catering towards their own state, and so I was wondering, wondering like this mention of M K Stalin is the one. Uh, as mentioned under this article, and I was wondering, like, what is this? How like does 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 a chief minister literally write uh, the you know the piece? And then I found out that that it, towards the end is mentioned. You know, M K Stalin is the chief minister of Tamil Nadu and president of DMK. This article is an edited version of the chief minister's speech. So this is with regard to how it has been put forward, and especially as to his viewpoint as to how the need could possibly be. Of a discriminatory note in and how the education system is different as per the states as well. That was just a basic brief with regard to the editorials. I was, I just found this a very interesting idea. So every time you pick up your newspaper, how about we start with this one thing? Just pick, pick a paper and open the middle page and start on the middle page. And, and that gives like you see a lot, lot of better perspective with regard to how different authors or different writers have their own perspective with regard to certain issues as such. Though you have these reporting, you have what, what's happening during the day and to have a uh, situation with regard to the country, the state and a lot of ads as well. But then once you open the editorial, you get to have more glance picture and also you can point out if it's, you know, it's a lot more opinion based and some, sometimes there's also been an allegation, I don't know how the editorials um, or how the newspapers are kind of tilting towards changing the public opinions in not, 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 not in the good sense of, of Benefit to the public, but in, in their own in their own interests as such, kind of like endorsing certain people and things like that. those kind of things which should not happen. But then let's start with the editorial. So let so we at argument are going to start this uh, particular campaign of sorts. At least two episodes uh, in one month with regard to to reading your editorials. So we're going to start with the hashtag start the editorial. So do stay tuned to more episodes like these if you like this episode. Uh, if you like it, do put forward in the comments as well. And also if you have had anything interesting that I missed out. Or if anything can be improved with regard to it and how we could possibly make reading the newspaper a lot better. Because I wouldn't prefer, even today, uh, I wouldn't prefer, I would know I would read the newspaper or read, read articles of what's happening in the news online, but I still want to feel the paper. And that's one thing I often stress upon. So 
if you like this video do like share and subscribe to argument of Podcast and stay tuned to more and if you have any recommendations or suggestions feel free to put form in the dm or even on the comments as well until then stay tuned for more episodes thank you for watching so this current episode the full length will be available on youtube and also you will be able to find the latest updates about this session as well on instagram and other platforms as well so do like share and subscribe to our channel on youtube and also follow our instagram page with regard to regular updates as well